Hi, Diego. Yeah, can you hear me? Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for joining and welcome. We have a fantastic conversation. Mayang is here, uh, Felix is here. Perfect, I'm um, upgrading you guys to moderators and we can kick things off. Great, Felix, Mayang, are you here with us? Hello, hello, absolutely. Great to be here, Marley. Wonderful. So today's discussion involves a lot of product leaders from great, great companies. I'll, we will let people introduce themselves and we'll talk about how to grow as a PM, whether this is in the beginning of your career, whether it is for seasoned PMs or whether you actually want to grow and become a people manager. So with that said, um, I think we can kick off with some introductions. Um, so I'm Merrily. I am an AR VR product lead at Google. I've I've been doing this for over eight years. Um, I'm very technical. It took me a while to convert to the PM ladder from um, having a technical background, but I love being a product manager. I advocate for it, and as part of um, Clubhouse and you know the week in product, I always love advocating and helping people grow. So yeah, let's let's continue with introductions. Uh, Diego, do you want to go next? Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you so much for hosting us. Hey, everyone. My name is Diego Granados. I'm currently a senior product manager at Microsoft working on AI and machine learning. I've been working as a PN for um, sort of close to five years, and it's been fantastic. Uh, contrary to Marley, I actually came from the other side, from the business side, and I'm getting more technical. So it's been a fantastic journey uh, working with, here with this group on the product manifesto. Uh, Mayang, do you want to go next? Absolutely. Thanks, Diego. Uh, I'm Mayank, a product manager at Facebook. Merrily, Mayank, thank you, you might be on mute. Oh, I'm on mute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, great. I'm Mayank, uh, product manager at Facebook. Uh, great to be here. Merrily, thank you for having uh, having us all here today. Super excited about the topic, uh, how to grow as a PM. I mean, come on, it's been a while. We saw the journey, so it's a, it's a topic very close to heart. So looking forward to the discussion today. Perfect. Felix. Absolutely. Hey, everybody. I'm a Felix Watson, a product manager at Google, previously at Microsoft. This topic is uh, so near and dear to my heart. I uh, started a community on LinkedIn called the Product Management Mastermind because I'm so passionate about helping other PMs grow. It took me a while in my almost four years of being a PM. The first two were pretty rough. It was a very challenging ramp, uh, learning how to really improve and grow and so i love this topic so i'm excited to dive in today perfect thank you and felix we need to meet uh, internally for a coffee so that i can welcome you properly <laughs> way overdue i'm definitely going to put something on your calendar perfect okay my young i'm going to pass it on to you i know you have a couple of questions prepared and i'd love to dive right into the topic of the day which is how to grow as a pm Brilliant. Thank you so much. So some context uh, about Product Manifesto and the connection with this session. Uh, Product Manifesto is really a, uh, an initiative that we all, this group, and we have an extended group that's working on. But what is it? Uh, well, to learn more, go to productmanifesto.com. But in short, uh, the answer is, um, we all had questions like, what, uh, what, how can we get better at building better products? How can we grow as a PM? How can we build a better product teams? And, and how can we share our learnings with people and learn from each other? Uh, in a way where we have a playbook that we can view sometime and just get better at these skills whenever we need them in a career. So we all got together and said, let us, and said let's list the top 10 challenges, uh, what the PMs face, uh, how to grow as a PM being one of them. So very important topic for us. And for these top 10 challenges, what are the principles or solutions that we recommend as a group of people for different skills of PM product management? And that gave rise to the product manifesto. Uh, it's, it's live now on product manifesto com please go have a look at it today's discussion is about how to grow as a product manager uh, again very interesting topic uh, let's start with a very direct question to to this panel right why is it so hard to grow as a product manager why is it so different and hard to grow as a product manager Phoenix I'll start with you why is it so hard man yeah this is a good question it comes up a lot and I think it's difficult because there are a lot of factors that 
really influence whether or not you grow and how you grow as a PM, right? So first off, growth as a PM means something different for everybody, right? Maybe you want to be a manager, maybe you want to stay at IC, you know, maybe you want to start your own company, it just depends, right? Um, but those factors are really important. So a lot of people think about skills, like, oh, I'm not technical enough, or maybe my communication skills. That's just one pillar. Um, and you can control the skills that you grow, you can take courses, you can do some study, et cetera, but there's a lot of other factors, one being uh, context, right? So I'll talk about kind of four factors, your skills, your context, your experiences, and your support. So when you think about skills, I already covered skills, when you think about context, you will learn something way different and grow way differently if you're at a startup that's pre-product market fit versus you're at a startup that's kind of in a hyper growth phase versus you're working on a product that has already achieved massive scale and is sort of making incremental improvements all the time. So that's, that's just one factor. Then when you think about um, experiences, as a PM, you just have to ship things. And the truth is, sometimes it takes a while to ship something, right? I mean, especially at, at a big company, I remember when I joined Google, people told me, hey, don't really expect to ship anything within your first like three to six months. I'm still pushing really hard to ship something by the end of uh, Q4, which will put me at around that six month mark, but it, it's not easy, right? It takes, it takes time to, to work through the process and ship things and get feedback and iterate. Um, and so you really have to have different experiences to grow as a PM. And then finally support. Um, a lot of times, I can't tell you how many PMs I talk to that want a promotion, but they've never asked for one. And asking for something is the first step to gaining support, whether it be mentorship, a new project you want to work on, uh, you know, a growth opportunity, um, anything. You, but you have to ask, you have to build that support with your manager, mentors, maybe even sponsors. We, we may talk about the difference between mentors and sponsors later today. But, but again, all those different factors, I think that's what really makes it complex uh, to, to grow as a product. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Wow, that was a solid PM answer with the three-point framework. Uh, depends upon the company, startup versus large. Uh, shipping something is important. Uh, nothing like shipping because that shows momentum and growth. And asking for growth. If you don't ask for a promo, you'll never get it. I think I'll push hard on this uh, and, and discuss and open up another quite discussion, which is like on, the, on these three topics. Uh, when you say... Uh, startup or a large company like why is it different and, and uh, let's, let's go round table uh, Marilee uh, about you like why is PM growth different in a startup versus a large company or you can also talk about why it's hard generally in a large or a startup company a startup versus a large company but uh, I'll jump in and this is such a good question well first of all in a big company things are a bit more structured you have a job ladder you can refer to you kind of know what the scope for the next level should be. And you have people around you that are probably on the next level and you can reach out to them. Now, I think the challenge is that if you're a PM, it means that you have a very diverse skill set, right? So PMs need to have different skills like storytelling and being very analytical and having a product sense and so on. So when it comes time to grow, you wonder and you say, do I need to grow all these skills equally? Do I need to grow some? Does it depend on my function? And then at the same time, do I wait to ask? Um, do I nominate myself? So part of it, I agree with Felix. It's um, it's not knowing, um, not having the courage to ask. And here is when I want to say that, um, especially for women in tech, it's very difficult to raise your hand and to say, I've done so much work. I'm worth it. Please, you know, nominate yourself to be promoted. Don't be afraid. If you don't ask, the answer is going to be no, definitely. Now, um, as far as the difference between uh, big tech companies and startups go, I feel like in a startup as a PM, you're likely to have an overlap with more roles. So you're likely to not just be a PM. Um, but in any case, there are some things that you need to do um, in both things. So big tech company and startup. You need, first of all, as we said, ask for it. Second of all, understand what the next level entails. For some big companies, you should be performing to the next level before you get promoted. So clarify that. If you have a manager, just create a plan with them. You need to PM your PM career. And I know this is a very cheesy kind of way of saying it, but you need to have a plan and a timeline and, and not be afraid to ask and just, just go for it, really. So yeah, these are my, my two cents. Oh, I love it. I think uh, the asking for 
uh, growth is, is something that's resonating with a lot of us here. I, I agree. Like I'll share my quick anecdote there. I always believe when I join as a PM that why should I ask for growth? I'm so passionate about the problem in the space. Let's go build some shit. Let's go ship some products. And and really, it was fun in the first two years, but I never asked for for growth. I mean, for a promotion. And promotion is only they think of growth generally. But again, personally, it's different to this point. It's subjective what growth means to you. For most of us in the early stages, learning, you question the learning to what promotion next but i think yeah that was my journey i never asked for it and it never happened for the first few years which in hindsight i could have actually accelerated much quickly if i would have asked for it for that plan and so so forth i love that point i think asking if if what if anyone should take one thing away today go ask go for ask and see the and magic see the what happens the next time you catch up with your manager or your manager or your about uh, about the career the, the next step if a good manager would be the last people let's work on a plan with you that's when things are rolling okay uh, i'll not give too much uh, theory there i'll move on to diego diego thoughts on either asking the question from your perspective what is the best way to go about that or about startup versus uh, a large company in the asking context as well like how is it different for a startup versus a large company diego over to you yeah i'll yeah. I'll, I'll go towards the, the why is is it difficult uh, because i've mostly have experiences in in large tech companies but i think one of the biggest challenges especially when you start your career as a product manager is that you read everything about product management you read everything or, or watch videos or consume articles and you see how product managers in this theoretical concept do you know everything in at every stage of the life cycle of a product and then you join um especially big tech organizations and you realize that you are actually doing just one piece at of every stage of the product at different stages of the of, of its life cycle because the product organization is um is is bigger there are many pms who are in charge of of one single product right so i think that echoing a little bit of what felix was mentioning at the beginning is you realize that when you start there's really no direction on how to get to point b point b being your promotion being the growth whether it's i see your manager uh marley was referring to yes you, you know what you need to do there, there's a like, set of guidelines there's a few things that you have to do but how to get there in in this role that doesn't exactly look like what you read what you investigated about i think that's what makes it really hard it's it's um absolutely you have to be vocal you have to reach out to your manager you have to plan for it but i just think it's hard at the beginning because between learning about the new role understanding that it's not exactly as you write about it and then trying to figure out how to get from point a to point b it just becomes um a, a path that is so unique to every product manager that sometimes it's hard to replicate that's that's my thoughts and especially in the early uh, starting point mm. for, for pms I think what I'm extracting from this is the subjectivity in the role and and the role being I would say relatively less mature in the world today I mean less mature compared to let's say a consulting or a lawyer where you have clearly defined path for your career whether it's coming from partner uh, from a associate to a senior associate to a so on and so forth uh, PM roles are their levels are defined in large organization I mean you can argue startups still don't have that but the subjectivity here really makes it super hard uh, to cart that path. So asking the question forces people to create a structure for us, and then we can start marching on the path toward path toward a growth. Okay, I, I want to just harp on the startup thing. I think this uh, asking and creating a path is pretty, I would say, somewhat straightforward in large organizations because if you ask, we are supposed to help you. If not, start yelling about it. Like ask again, ask again. The word is ask again. Don't make sure you take the word ask from this session today. I would repeat this multiple times, by the way. In a startup, the, the hard problem is, a hard part is, I don't think people care so much about you. Like, the mission is go make the startup successful. And when you go talk about your career, sometimes I felt, am I being too selfish about me? Because it's primarily about the startup being, startup being successful. Why am I really going deeper into about myself? Am I being greedy? Am I being too selfish? I don't know. I fought that battle when I was in a startup to talk about my career. And by the time I started talking about that, the answer was, well, I, we cannot give you what you want. And maybe it's time for you to take off and try something new. 
I will not name the startup. It's based on the stage when you graduate and say it's over and try something different. But how do you tackle, do you have experience first? How do you navigate your career uh, as a PM in a startup? How do you discuss this? You know, asking is great, but they, they may not have the structure Google or Microsoft would have to support their career forward. What's your approach to that? I, either of you, Marilee, Felix, and, and Diego. By the way, I can see all of them on a Zoom call, so I can also see the reaction. I, I, I do have a comment before jumping into this, which is, what is the goal of the growth? So do you want to grow, meaning do you want to make more money? Do you want your title to go from associate to senior to director to VP? Do you want to have your own team? Because this matters. So first of all, I think it's, it's very important to clarify the goal. Um, for example, in a startup, I think it's very likely that the title is going to be good. Like a lot of people are called head of or, you know, director or, or anything like this. So it might be more more equity. It might be more um, more money. So anything like this. So just wanted to plug this in as well before um, someone answers. Oh, I love that. Actually, tying back to the goal. Like, oh yeah, that's a very PM answer again. And let's go back. Let's go tie back to the goal. Uh, what is growth for you? So let's define that. That help you ask the right question. And based exactly. on the startup versus a large company, you can find a navigating a path. Okay, so we are rewinding, and we're saying asking is great, but let's define what is goal for you. I love it. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about goals, guys. What, are, Marily, what's your goal? And we have Ashok in the room. Ashok, welcome, welcome. Uh, we'll bring you up to stage very soon. Uh, let's invite him as well. Marily, what's your goal? Uh, share I us your goal. Yes, yes. Um, I, I think I recently got faced with the question of, hey, do you want to be a, um, a super, super, super senior IC or do you want to start having your own team? And it took a while to kind of realize whether this was the right approach for me or not. Um, and I talked to a lot of people and it came down to, hey, this is a completely different job than what you were used to. And I, th I think I wanted to just try it out and see what it's like. So to me, growth is helping other people grow. And of course, we all do it, right? It's our community and the fantastic um, advocacy we're all doing with things like product manifesto. But it's different to be the manager of someone else. So for me, I, I really wanted to explore that part. And I had to create a plan as to how I can eventually reach um, there and have my own report. So yeah, growth me is having that report, really. Interesting. I think this was a very clear binary answer, manager versus an IC answer, that your goal is very clear that you wanted to help people grow. Okay, uh, let's go sir, for some uh, good, we have the binary answer off our way. Thanks, Marily. Really. Uh, uh, that's a good question. At least once you once we are in a career for about like three, four years, and we do question, do you want to support people versus helping others? And it's a good pivot towards growth, of helping people grow versus working as an IC. Like that framework. That's number one. Ashok is one of our our, we have one more new person on the, on the panel today. Ashok has joined for some time, maybe. He is uh, one of our panel members uh, on the working group for Manifesto and also leading product at Tumblr. Ashok, welcome. Uh, Hi, everyone. Hey, Ashok. So, talking about. No, all good. Man. You're never late. This is Clubhouse. It's a party. Just join whenever you want. You leave whenever you want. Uh, okay. So, um, Marie talked about uh, what are the goals of your growth is super important to uh, figure out. And one of the goals was, well, you want to become an IC versus manager. I think that's a good one. Uh, what are the goals we people can think about? Because I think the hard part part is to define the goal. Like what is growth for us that, that is help us and also help, uh, help us professionally to acquire more skills, but also help us grow in the ladder. Because that's where we challenge. The balance of those two is very hard. So goals. Uh, a show. Uh, uh, Diego or uh, Felix, uh, how would you set your goals or what are your goals for growth as PMs? And you can go back to the history also when I started. Well, this was my goal, but now that's changed so and so forth. Sure, uh, I can uh, try that. So, initially, my uh, background is engineering, but I was not a computer science student. So, initially, my goal was actually to learn a lot. So, my, a lot of my career choices were based on that. Uh, but when I became comfortable with those things, my next growth phase was always defined by the cat side. And I, I was actually not really good at, like, let's say, figuring out the strategy or, you know, working on revenue. So I pushed myself to like those areas, like, you know, growth, working on growth team, working on conversion, working on a new business model like subscription, right? So right now, I mean, I'm kind of like a people manager, but also like, you know, manage a, a, 
you know goals and and and, and you know things for a large chunk of you know the organization. At this point in time, I feel very imposterous most of the time that I'm not relevant anymore. If, if I have to do my own company or start my own team from ground up, or like you know being an IC again. So my growth goals are basically to push myself laterally in the different like you know streams like design, think about going back to like the analysis here and there. So I keep that in mind for my next phase because I want to become a CTO at some point in time. So those are the functions that is basically I'll be working with very closely. Honestly, I love that. I mean, CPO at some time, that's a good uh, destination to work backwards from there, uh, which means acquiring horizontal skill set and move forward. I think that's exciting. I mean, the, the fact some people can define what the destination is and then work backwards from there also proactively pushes us to set the intermediate goal. So again, like a lot of us when we started did not have a destination we were enjoying the journey. But if people were, if somebody gave us a tip, if you're doing the journey, find destination. And if you have a destination, enjoy the journey. So I think it goes uh, in both ways. Uh, all right. Uh, so take away from this for me would be uh, good to have a destination to work backwards from there. And it could be lateral skill set, acquire new skill set and then move forward. Uh, we're hearing a lot of um, people who in this panel who are already in the career and travel the journey and then deciding the growth for it, what growth, growth is. Uh, good to get some perspective on also uh, your career in the beginning, how you traveled your journey. So I'll go to Diego and Mike and Jay, we have on stage with uh, you as well. We'll go to you guys right after Diego. Diego, some thoughts either on your personal experience now or also from your early days. What was, what growth meant to you when you started or it could be about right now as well. Diego. Yeah, I think, I think it's a fun prompt because uh, it certainly has changed. When I started, I think one of the first things that I learned was uh, you can't see progression in product management from, okay, I'm an associate PM, then I'm going to be a PM, then I'm going to be a senior PM, and you will continue growing all the way to CPO, right? Um, in fact, titles are meaningless across companies. You could be a senior PM at a company, and that will translate into PM at another company. And that doesn't mean you're taking a step back. It's just a completely different meaning. So that's one of the first lessons that I had to learn when I started PM. Um, and another very interesting lesson that I learned is, uh, it never occurred to me that you can be that you can grow as a PM being an individual contributor. And I think that opened the gates for me to understand that PM is not just you'll be a PM and then a manager of PMs and then a manager of manager of PMs and is just a very you know typically hierarchical uh, uh, type of structure. And that actually let me to realize that as a product manager, you can grow in so many paths from yes, going up the ladder to CPO or being a founder or continuing being the expert on even one of the core principles, like you could be known for being the best executionist or the best strategist or the best, you know, whatever it is that you want to specialize on. So um, I'll stop there because I, we have some guests in, in the panel as well. But to me, that was the, some of the things, some of the lessons that I learned early in my career about growing and where I wanted to be my destination next. Um, I'll reserve my answer to what I see as in terms of growing today, but that's my answer on what I learned uh, you know, previously. It's so nice. Like we're covering the entire spectrum now. Uh, you can be in IC and still grow. But, but uh, just uh, I'll come to Mike and Jay in a bit. Mike, Jay, sorry for, for the wait. Uh, Diego, like what's your motivation then uh, to grow as a IC to the next level? Because see, Marily was very clear when she wants to become manager, she wants to support, help people grow. Like a clear motivation why manager. Um, uh, Ashok has a clear motivation. I want to learn diverse skills so that I can become someone who has that perspective to make decisions for the entire product versus a part of it. When you grow as an IC, what are you growing? Like it's just leveling up or there's something else that's motivating you to do that? <laughs> so that's 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 an answer that I'm still looking for. I think being early in my <laughs> career, being early in my career allows me in my career in product management allows me to still experiment and try a few things. Like if you ask me, hey, would you like to be a manager? The answer is, well, I don't know, but I also don't know if I want to be an individual contributor forever, right? So it's one of those things that I want to experiment. Maybe I'll manage uh, a group of PMs in a couple of years. And if I like it, that's awesome. I'll continue that path. If not, I'll move back to individual contributor. So I don't have a clear answer on what motivates to be an IC forever, yeah. but it's certainly something that I'm looking for. 
Oh, I think I think that's another perspective. You don't have to know always what you want. I mean, it's okay to experiment and see what you like. If you like multiple cuisines or you hate something, so try multiple things and see what you like. So being an IC and trying multiple product products or spaces could be a good way to figure out what space you love and then go deep into it. No, I love the perspective. Okay, we have Mike and Jay in the room. Uh, uh, Mike, I think you came first. Uh, love to hear your thoughts. Uh, any question for us? Uh, we'll try to keep it relevant to this topic. Uh, if it is a little different, we'll come back to you. So, Mike, go for it. to the panel so growth is it growing as a pm uh related to growing as your product or simply growing like at an individual level um, that's such a good question go um, really good. seriously okay i love it i love it um here's here's a hack okay you need to start up your career and grow with your product because it's your first, it's kind of your first product. You're gonna learn the inside, the outs, what it means to set a roadmap, what it means to have impact, and so on. But you need to know when to not focus just on that and when to grow with the organization. There is gonna be a point in time where you will need to do it in parallel. So you will need to grow with your product, but at the same time, open your eyes and see what's happening outside your product area. Look at other product areas. Talk to PMs you you haven't ever met in in completely different organizations. If you have a, a, a big a big company, and then after that, change product areas so that you can try different things. So don't be afraid to try different things within your own company, because that's the recipe for success, I believe. And there's nothing bad. Uh, there's nothing frowned upon if you change teams. It's actually encouraged in some of the the big companies. So yeah, start of the career by focusing on your product, learn the the craft of product management, and then look around and grow with the organization, but in different product areas. So yeah, that's my answer. Marily, we lost you in the last uh, five seconds. Could you repeat the last five seconds? Oh yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's what I said. So in the beginning, focus on your product, learn the craft, and then focus on reaching out to other people and networking and understanding more about the organization, change teams and grow with the company as you change different teams. Because at the end of the day, senior leadership will want someone that has tried different functions as opposed to someone that has done the same thing for like 10 years, if that makes sense. That's a, that's a good answer. Uh, can I add a contrarian point to that? Uh, uh, I think uh, the takeaway for me was I love the love your product first and keep your eyes open. If something else exciting shows up where you can grow, jump and grow. Is that right, Murali? I mean, just want to make sure I understand it right. Yeah, I think that was my point I was trying to extract. I think that's a very great feedback. I love that too. Uh, but if there's one reason to stay, let's say you're learning something which you don't think you learn anywhere else, I would stay. Go deep and get the craft. To her point, like extract the craft and make sure uh, make sure you take it then to the next uh, team and you move on. Uh, I think I'll share my short experience. Like when I was I joined a team, uh, it was a small bet, uh, but the goal was to build a business, not a product feature. I love that part. Like I didn't worry about the feature, the value of it, but the fact it was building a business, working not just with business designers, engineers, and uh, uh, and the researchers, but beyond that, like sales team, the whole the whole shebang. 
and I didn't care about what will happen. I spent three years, which is a long time. It was like a big time for a large tech company. And what it taught me was how to build a business. Did the product become a huge deal? Maybe not. But that was the right time for for me to take a next step and then find new things. To Murray's point, yes, I was actively networking, not to just change job, but to learn about things happening in the company. It also helped the existing product. Or helps you have a good context of what your company is doing. Maybe that brings a big respect to your existing product, and you can go further, or you make a switch when you want. So the answer is you have to be proactive uh, in product managing your career. Ask yourself what the goal is. Again, going back to our thinking earlier, and uh, same thing applies here as well. Uh, you have to grow with the product and the organization in order to to, to make this point. Moving on, uh, Jay, I'll come back to you in a bit. Felix, any thoughts on this? We have seen you been quite for some time, Felix. Yeah, I think yeah, I, think I would, add would add as well, as well if you're early in your PM career, PM career I, I often I tell people be careful, careful about, about leaving, the leaving the discipline, especially if you know you're really you're interested really in PM. In PM. Yeah. Um, because um, in those early stages, stages kind of like what Marilyn was saying, is like those early stages, it's really critical that you get you get the basics down. And so in later on in your career, though, like also like Marilyn was saying, you know, it makes yeah, sense it makes to maybe sense. try different disciplines because, because I've heard this story many times from different executives, executives, right? Like right. if you're trying to, you're go, trying to, to go to like, to like I, don't I don't know, if you're in a big enough company that have like vice presidents or, you know, executive, executive vice presidents, president, those types of folks, president, a lot of times those roles can um, be, it can be attractive to hire people into those roles that have a diversity of experience from a discipline standpoint. So, you know, to address Mike's question, I think, yeah, early on, it's, it's might be a little bit dangerous to completely switch from product into like marketing or something like that, um, because you might lose touch with some of the actual, like what it takes to work with the development team and ship things. But if your company is small enough where you'll still have a lot of those interactions, I don't think you need to be afraid of it. But again, it all goes back to what's the support that you have, you know, have you made an ask? Have you set up a plan? Like, is this a part of a broader plan or is it, you know, where I am is a little uncomfortable. Let me jump to something else. Um, so, you know, avoid that and, and have more, you know, more concerted approach of like focus on what you want to do. Love it. I love it. I, love I think uh, on this note, somebody shared a good idea with me. When you oh, switch teams, teams of company, it should be a pull from the company versus a push from the current team. And what that means is I'm bored, so I'm just moving for the heck of it. I don't know what to like in the next team or not, the next company, but it's a change. Well, change is refreshing for the first two months, and then it's the grind again. Rather than that, it should be a pull. Oh, I love that product. Oh, it will help me grow. And th so again, as you move, it should be a pull versus a push from the current team. Uh, if it's both, that's amazing, by the way. But yeah, it should be, it should be pull rather than push. Awesome, thanks, Felix. Um, Jay, I'll go to you next, and then uh, Othman, uh, I'm not sure if I'm mentioning your name, we'll come back to you next after Jay. Jay, any thoughts, any questions for us? Go for it. Hey guys, thank you so much for bringing me up on stage. Um, Mayank, I did send you a message regarding the manifesto. Um, so my question, I guess it's a comment initially and then a question towards the end. So I'm in an organization where currently uh, we're moving from being a project um, focused organization to moving towards being product, uh, focusing on the product management side. Uh, and one of the things, the challenges that we're kind of growing through is how we structure our teams. And so I was kind of wondering, you know, given that we have a diverse um, representation from different, you know, organizations on stage, um, any thoughts in terms of, you know, team structure? I know, you know, some organizations have changed um, team structures more often, but if you have any thoughts on that, and then as it pertains to the topic that we're talking about right now, um, have you so for products that are more tech focused to building you know a software application have you from experience if you didn't have a tech background have you struggled as a product manager on it um or you know on the other side coming in you know from the business side and um actually no, no, no. I, th I think that that's the question there. Sorry. Um, and so coming in as a generalist PM and taking on a tech product, has have you struggled with that? Let me let me take the first part. Um, 
So first of all, cool that the company is moving from project to a more product mindset. I think that's really, really great. Um, what I have to say is that there's a trap in there and you want to make sure that people that will be, you know, calling themselves product managers will actually focus on strategy and long-term vision and so on. And project managers will actually focus on the execution. Um, in terms of the structure, you should have a PM that will kind of be a bit more cross-functional. So with engineering and marketing and strategy and um, legal and privacy, depending what it is you're building, but you need a program or a project manager that will be there with engineering hand by hand, make sure they're going to be the timekeepers, uh, make sure they're going to be helping the team to reach the milestones that they need to reach. Um, so I would say, a program manager for the engineering team, um, not, not more than seven engineers. If it's more, I would get two uh, program managers. And then one product manager to cover the overall area. So I think, of course, I don't know the product exactly, but I think this this approach uh, could lead to success. So yeah, and I will actually let um, Diego get the first one, the second question, because I think it's all him. <laughs> yes, I, I guess I get part of uh, coming from the, the business side and going into a highly technical product. Uh, is it a struggle? And the answer is yes. Um, and and there's no easy path. There's no shortcut. It, it, it takes time, and that's the number one thing that you have to to accept because you're gonna feel imposter syndrome very very quickly because you're gonna be in conversations and understand 10% of what's happening. And, and you have two options. Your option one is to just try to catch up and try to figure it out and slowly grinding and, and kind of trying to understand what is happening. And the second one is asking for help. I'll use myself as an example. So I join an AI and machine learning team without knowing absolutely anything about AI and machine learning other than watching um, iRobot and all those kind of movies. Um, so here's, here's the thing is when I joined, I talked to my data science team and I said, all right, so I know about product management. I watch products. Here are the things that I know about product management and, and the life cycle of products, but I know nothing about AI. Um, what do you recommend that I start with? What are, you, what are the things that you think as a PM I should focus on in trying to understand from the technical side? And, and here's the thing. I don't know if we have data scientists uh, in the room and they, they might send me um, uh, you know, some, some really naughty messages at the end, but coding a machine learning model takes five lines of code. That's it. But there's nothing more to it. But what happens before and what happens during and what happens after is what really matters from the PM perspective. And that is what you need to start thinking about is you don't need to know how to code things. You don't need to know how uh, the whole system to the very, you know, technical details, how it works end to end. But you have to understand at a high level what are the implications of that technology. And the way to learn that, like I was saying before, is asking for help, asking your team, what are the things that I should focus on? What are the things that, um, you know, what are the trade-offs? What are, why should we focus on X technology versus Y technology? And those are the kind of things that I started doing. After that, I, of course, started taking courses on machine learning. I started taking courses on AI. I started to combine the things that I knew from the business side, with the technical side, to start questioning the data scientists on our projects and simply trying to, to bring them back into a more customer-focused approach to our solutions. And that's where I come in and add the value. They're the experts on the models. They're the ones that are going to do some fine tuning and understand the whole process. But I'm the one who's bringing the customer perspective, who's bringing uh, the big picture of, hey, we're not just doing one model. Is how does this model impact the rest of our portfolio, and and where should we head to next? But definitely, uh, kind of bringing back to the first thing that I said is that it is a struggle. It's a steep uh, learning curve. Imposter syndrome is real. And it's not about thinking, okay, you know what, that's the end of it. I'm just going to you know, sit down in meetings and try to understand. It's asking your team for help. They're there to support you. Awesome. Awesome. Felix, uh, let's get some uh, final thoughts on this and we'll get back to the track of PM growth again. Yeah. But it's an interesting topic that people care about. So I'll let you share two cents and then we'll move on to our uh, discussion on growth. Absolutely. So I think Diego made some great points. 
One thing I wanted to add is that there's actually some downsides to coming into software development, product management as a technical, uh, with, with a technical background. That was me. I was an engineer in the past. I joined this, you know, new role that's super ambiguous with tons of activities that you can do, tons of tasks to complete, and it's not clear which ones you should prioritize. And so I gravitated towards the ones that were really comfortable for me. As an engineer, when my dev team was talking about, oh, we're, you know, we're having a hard time getting this feature to work or integrating with this other API or figuring out how to use this, you know, this new infrastructure, I would like dive into the details and, you know, I'd be going and talking to other engineering managers and spending a lot of time really trying to grasp all the technical details. And that wasn't the best use of my time, right? As a PM, I really need to be focused on the problems, the customers, how do we prioritize those problems for what customers, really understanding the story, the, you know, all of that, the vision, the strategy. And so that's one downside to coming in as an engineer, because I think, and I've heard this from other engineers that turned PMs, like they had that same struggle, learning how to transition from a solution owner, you know, writing the software, building the solution to a problem owner, really, really understanding the problem, diving deep, right? So you know, I would add that. And then the other thing is be really intentional and getting back to growth, like be intentional about the opportunities you choose, right? Because even as a non-technical kind of PM, you don't have to do what Diego did and go go work on AM, AI ML at Microsoft, right? Like, you know, my first product that I worked on at Microsoft was a recruiting application, right? And so I mean, you can imagine a, a great PM on that product, maybe they came from a recruiting background, maybe they came from somewhere in a business, right? You don't have to know all the details of AI and analytics to build like, you know, uh, an applicant tracking system that can keep track of who's, who's going to interview next or, or that sort of thing. So, so be intentional about, you know, the, the opportunities you pursue. And if you're coming from non-technical background, think about ways to leverage um, you know, what expertise you do have and work on products where that aligns. Absolutely. I think I was about to say that you don't have to go the Yago route and do complete crazy AI and uh, engineering work. Uh, we can also select products that are a little bit lighter technology and get there. Coming back to growth again. Uh, awesome, folks. Good, good discussion. Uh, we have one more person who's on stage. I'll, I'll let, uh, let me ask a question. Uh, Otman, uh, if I said the name right, if not, please correct myself, uh, correct me. Any questions for us on PM growth? Yeah, sure. And Otman, it is, yeah, uh, you're saying it, you're spelling it right. Uh, hello, everyone. Very insightful discussion. I uh, actually wanted to ask you a question, but uh, first, I want to give you some context. Uh, I'm Otman, I work uh, in Paris in a, in a tech company, in a startup. And I actually come from a business background. I did a business school and then I worked at PepsiCo as a marketeer, uh, as, a product, uh, as a category manager uh, for uh, a year and a half. And then I thought to myself, well, I'm very far from, uh, from the technology. Uh, it's as simple as that. And I wanted to pair up my career with uh, some tech background. And I didn't have one whatsoever uh, at that point. And just by chance, I'm going to find a position in a company that is called uh, Product Operations uh, Manager. Uh, so basically, I support the PM uh, in his, uh, I handle the operational aspects of uh, of the PM's life, so basically streamlining communication, uh, collecting feedback, collecting bugs, uh, helping, helping him prioritize. And that's really cool. I'm really learning a lot, and I feel that I'm, uh, I'm like emerging uh, into into this new job. Uh, the thing is that I feel that my abilities in business, I can't use them effectively because I'm very far from the decision making uh, part because that would be the PMs, uh, and I feel a little bit bored. Uh, I'm uh, because. Ultimately, I want to become a PM, uh, that's obvious, and um, I feel a little bit bored on my day-to-day -day tasks, and I know I should just keep going, uh, but I wanted to ask you if the right way to go to become a PM, and a good one, was uh, to go to this position called Product Operations Managers, and I can further explain the position if you've never heard of it. Thank you. Fantastic. I think that was, thank you for the context. Really appreciate that. Uh, I think this falls very well into our next topic, which is how do I find the right opportunity? Uh, what is a good one for me? Is it based on skills, interest, passion, growth? Because again, that will help you move to the next level. Felix, you have some interesting thoughts about this. Why don't you jump in? How do you find your next opportunity? 
Yeah, so finding opportunity is really important. Uh, to address your question, I think product ops or any other product adjacent role is a great way because it may give you opportunity to work with product managers and network with them, you know, learn what the role takes. So I think you know, you're in a fine place just to start networking, start talking to people and figure out, okay, what's the next step and get that support so forth and have a plan. Uh, now, as far as choosing opportunities, it's always important to really, like, it goes back to what we said at the very beginning, right? Set your aspirations, set your goals, understand what your goals are. Now, for me, I realized pretty early on, I wanted a diversity of, of PM experience. I wanted breadth so that I could really be as helpful of a PM mentor, coach, uh, you know, community leader as I could. And so when I started, like I mentioned, I was in B2B products. I worked on a recruiting application. Had an opportunity to also work on a marketing uh, application. So that was like B2B. As I thought about what was next for me, I felt like that role, in that business uh, business application space actually wasn't leveraging a lot of my data technical background that I had. And so as I thought about being a PM and really understanding being data driven, you know, being able to write several queries, even as a previous career, I never had that. So I asked around and I found out, well, Azure at Microsoft is a highly data driven organization. Many PMs are diving into data in that org to really find opportunities to understand problems. So I did that. I jumped from B2B applications to actually what was an internal tool um, at Microsoft. Uh, but I was doing a lot of data. I had to learn how to write SQL queries, dig into data, find opportunities. That was great. As I kept working on that, I realized, well, look at the internal tool. The scale is limited. Um, there's not like millions of, of customers working on this, and therefore we didn't do a ton of like experimentation. And I've been hearing, you know, just being involved in the product community, I've been hearing about experimentation and how important it is. And, you know, some companies do it better than others, et cetera. So I said, okay, how, how can I get some of that? I started asking around again, right? And I started digging in. I found out, well, growth is a really interesting discipline within PM, where there's a lot of experimentation. There's a lot of, it's, it's still leaning on some of that data analysis, but you also have to understand vision and strategy. And so, so it's just like, okay, let me find a growth role. I start talking to more people. Stumbled upon, you know, the growth marketplace role that I'm in right now at Google. And so this is how I charted that path, right? It's like really thinking deeply about what is it that I want to really learn? What skills do I want to grow? And what types of opportunities will, will get me there? And just from talking to people, really realize, like, okay, okay, this is the type of opportunity you want next. And then just sort of just like that. So uh, the point I'm referring uh, to this is uh, keep trying to meet people to learn what could be the opportunity. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be you know what you want and then you could chase it versus just talk to people. You might find what you like. Is that is that the uh, takeaway feeling from what you did in your sort of uh, finding opportunity? Definitely. I think, you know, talking to people is what helped me clarify exactly what I wanted, right? All I knew before I started speaking with people was just, hey, I, I want diverse experiences. I'm in B2B. I want to maybe work my way to consumer at some point. Um, and so, you know, I've kind of charted that path over time where I'm more, now I'm a lot more closer to consumer facing products here at Google Play than I was when I was working on the applications. I love that. I think uh, you, you, Google is definitely a very unique place in terms of meeting people because there's a culture of sort of meeting and getting there. Ashok, uh, love to bring you back uh, and know your perspective because you have tried different kinds of companies at different levels. Uh, I'm sure that was also the pursuit of finding the right opportunity that excites you. Uh, love to know your thought process and how did you find the opportunity? Uh, not, not the most recent one because we definitely heard like your perspective on that on the CPU story, but anything going back, like what was your thinking process and finding the right opportunity? Yeah, that was my discovery of like what I want at this point was very nonlinear. I started off as a marketing person to launch a radio station in a city in India. And so um, from there on to here, I think what happened was a couple of things. One is I tried to embrace as much as possible new things that came to my way. Like I was very curious and I'm still curious. I think that's kind of a value that I have. And so um, as you said, right, I started speaking with a lot of people uh, in that role, it's on the first role itself. I found that, oh, well, I can be a very good generalist. I can do like, you know, data, data. I can do data analysis. I can do some research. I can do user studies, uh, even while, you know, building out the radio station. So I think from that point, I realized, oh, there's a role called product management emerging. And by the way, that was long, like in early 2000. So um, I think from there, I am like, you know, so a lot of people went to Yahoo search, like similar journey, like, like Diego, right? 
talking directly into like a very super heavy technical thing. I learned a lot there and I also realized that you no, know, I was saturated, getting saturated with the concept you know, knowledge about all these things. And it's time for me to break away from that. So I went into a very different like organization where we are not building a subscription based product, um, which is, you know, Spotify. So I think giving yourself a chance to try new things, understand your limits, like where you, what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy doing, uh, keeping the tab of that list going on, um, and evaluating that probably over a year or so is really, really helpful. Like, you know, it's almost like a, introspection right what you did in this year what you want to do what you learned what is this like and it's okay to also like think about what is it like you know now you don't want to do that. for example writing sql queries takes completely the energy out of me and i to be honest i could never be the sql person that i want to be uh, so uh, I, I tried i went kind of that i did a lot of other things um, you know but you have three um so i realized that my basically i should lean more into product design where, you know, when high-level goals are there, when we know what data points and we have insights, then how we innovate and, like, do a thing from the ground up. So things like this came into my, um, you know, things like, think realizations like this came to me. And that's why it led me to this path right now where I am. Oh, brilliant. So, uh, a lot of unique learnings across. We are nine minutes into the uh, into our closing session now. So uh, I'll just summarize one point and then move to uh, Amit and then we'll have a round table from all of us. Uh, one thing nobody mentioned is they were just sitting and things came to them. That's what PMs are all about. It's not about sitting and thinking it will work out. It will never happen. Opportunities will never come your way and, and sit on your lap and you'll just execute. Even if it's sitting there, you have to go grab it. So being proactive is what people have done in, in this panel, what, what we're hearing so far. So that's one next takeaway. One is asking for something. Second is go being proactive about it and networking or learning about things. I mean, we'll take the last question. Please keep it short. Otherwise, we have to cut you off. Unfortunately, we're running on short time today. So go for your question and then do a round table quickly. Amit, over to you. Yeah. Uh, we can't hear you. You are muted. Uh, let me try it on. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go for it. Oh, thanks, Mayak, and uh, thanks everyone on the panel to be here. Um, so um, I'm a project manager right now at Canada's second largest telecom company, and I've been in project management for the last six and a half years. Just a quick background on me and then follow up on the questions. Let's start. I don't have a CS background, but I understand that for product that's really not required, helpful but not required. Um, so bachelor's of science, specialization in biotech and environmental, and I've made a few pivots in my career sites. Then they would go to tech support, then they would go to project management. I'm mean, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, is it about how to get into PM from project management? We would love to talk about it in a different session. Um, so I had no idea about product management, but then I recently stumbled upon it while um, doing my market research. Um, I'm trying to understand, like I've done some market research and I'm talking to people who made a pivot from project to product and ask them why they made the pivot, so it's more strategic rather than the execution. I would love to get your insights as I further explore this role and read articles and look at videos. What would your advice be as to um, or something not in product management could really All right. realize and that, understand it. That's, a, that's an awesome question and thank you. And I I, I get this question often um, on messages and here in the, the weekly product. First of all, you're in the right place, right? You're following the weekly product. Uh, there are weekly, daily chats uh, by people that have made this pivot. Because you should know everyone that's at PM has not followed um, a specific path, right? So everyone has come from all sorts of pathways. I, I have a PhD in machine learning and pivoted to PM. Um, Diego is from business and pivoted to PM. So my advice is keep being here, keep reaching out to us, to people that speak, to people that you identify with, and just ask for advice, for mentorship. And um, just look at entry-level PM roles. There are many big companies that have um, the entry-level uh, programs like the RPM program at Facebook or the APM program at Google. I think these are great ways to break into product management without experience. So I, I hope I hope this helps. 
Awesome, awesome. awesome. Thank you, everyone. Uh, great, great session. We'll move on to last talk from all of us. We have exactly six minutes, so roughly 30, 45 seconds each. Uh, we'll start with Felix, Diego, Murali, and Ed. It will be me. No, really, you can go at the end because you can close us as, you know, as a room. So we'll start with Diego, Felix, Mayank, and Murali closing us all together. Diego, last thoughts. Growing as a PM, what is your takeaway for folks today? My takeaway is that one, there's no strict path. There are many ways to, to grow as a product manager. So one, make sure that you experiment, that you try and you think about what is best for you. Just because somebody else is taking a specific career to grow doesn't mean it's going to be the same for you. So reflect upon what you really want and go for that. Don't go simply pursuing the titles because across companies, the titles are meaningless. Fantastic, Felix, last thoughts. All right, so man, I have so many thoughts on this topic. I think I, rather than reiterate the four pillars, I'll go with something we haven't said yet, which is think about risk reward. I've talked to a lot of senior you know, leaders, whether they're made for like VP or higher, and one question that they always get is like, you know, how, how'd you do it? How'd you grow that fast or how'd you grow? And I've heard it at least from three different leaders that the risky projects are the ones that have helped them grow the most. And so obviously the follow-up is like, what is the risky project? How do you identify it? And that's not easy, but the two things I'll say is, you know, one, you want to look for the projects that it's not very clear, it's very ambitious, ambiguous, like what, what exactly we're trying to do, how we'll measure success. Um, there's no like kind of clear cut strategy in place already. And then two, you have to volunteer for them as well. Um, this strategy doesn't work very well if no one wants to volunteer and then you kind of get assigned the project without uh, any sort of kind of initiative. So I think taking initiative to jump on those projects that kind of everyone's hesitant to raise their hand for is one thing you may want to think about when it comes to growth. Oh, I love that. Wow. Very, very unique thoughts there. Like take some risk, do that stuff. All right. My turn now. Um, uh, everything is said. I think what has worked for me are two things. Number one, uh, sharing with people my thoughts on what I like or what I don't like or random thoughts that's not even well articulated has helped me figure out my thoughts better and what I like. What that means in English is go chat with more people and just share your thoughts. Somebody will say no to it. That's okay. Somebody will appreciate it. People like us will embrace it. So uh, share more. And second is uh, try tomorrow. Honestly, it's a Thursday. Go ask for uh, what's your career track? What's your path towards the next level? Somebody will help you pull up yourself or have a structured plan. That's my two takeaways I would like to share. Murali, over to you and then we can wrap it up. Hi, thank you.